second question in regards to Imperial Salt. Um, I know it hasn't been mentioned, um, but can you say something just to show confidence that you're still producing the game and you're going to make something for us to be excited about and keep the community that is trying to keep the game together? Yeah, we have uh, a couple uh, new things coming out for the app uh, relatively soon uh, that are going to be uh, cooperative, um, channel, like kind of cooperative challenge-based maps. Uh, I, I prefer those scenarios, and they're really fun. <laughs> yeah, that's fine, but like, I mean, to keep people excited, they're going to want more miniatures and more characters, and so we're hoping we could hear something that something is coming, not maybe specifically what's coming, but that something is coming. Nothing, we have currently have nothing planned as a physical, nothing additional planned as a physical product for Imperial Assault. Uh, but that line obviously has like approximately like 60 physical products in it. Uh, so there is a, a wealth of content there. And uh, a lot of the campaigns that we released as, uh, you know, one versus many uh, campaigns you can now play fully cooperative through the app as well. So is this it? Is this the end of Imperial Assault Skirmish? Well, maybe not quite. Enter the IACP. What is the IACP? IACP is the Imperial Assault Continuity Project, a fan-driven project to update and refine the skirmish part of the game so that it can continue to grow and evolve. Basically, IACP is the future of skirmish for the foreseeable future until FFG announces something new for the game. The purpose of the IACP is to implement small changes to cards and figures in the game to bring them back into competitive playability in a way that keeps the metagame fresh and evolving, but without making huge sweeping changes to the game that are difficult for the more casual player to track and keep up with. So first I want to talk about who's driving this ship, and then we'll talk about the actual changes that they've made to the game. This group of players appropriately calls themselves the Steering Committee and consists of six core members. These members are, in no particular order, Brett Kelly, 2019 World Champion and 2018 North American National Champion. Daniel Taylor, three-time World Champion. Kenny Brown, host of Zion's Finest Podcast and also World's Top 16 Finisher in 2018 and also recently in 2019. Jake Peterson, host of the Twin Troopers Podcast. Chris Emick, progenitor of the CNE Custom Skirmish Fixes Project that is separate from the IACP and Ben Varnum, 2019 Top 16 competitor. Currently, the plan is to run the IACP in three-month seasons, and right now they are in the middle of playtesting the Season 1 changes. In fact, you can be a part of the playtesting process by playing in the IACP Vassal League running from now until June 30th. If you're not familiar with playing Imperial Assault online with Vassal, World Champion Brett Kelly has a great tutorial video that you can check out in the description. So what are the changes the IACP has implemented for Season 1? The first and most important change that has been made is that the Spectre Cell upgrade has been temporarily banned until an appropriate solution has been found by the testing committee. This will help to reset the game's base power level back to an appropriate level and will mostly allow the metagame a chance to breathe after being trapped under the tremendous weight of the Spectre Cell menace for so long. Next, the most expansive but also least intrusive change in my opinion that's been made is points cost adjustments to over 20 deployment cards, all of which are old figures that have had their points costs reduced by the IACP. No other changes have been made to these cards' text or abilities, so as long as you account for the points changes in your list building, when you actually play with the updated cards on the table, they will, they will have the same text as they always had, but now there will be more points left over to spend in other parts of the list when using these figures. Some of the changes are quite pronounced, like Farm Boy Luke being reduced from 10 to 7, and Kane Somos being going from 10 to 6, but most of them are more subdued points changes of 1 to 2 points. The next change was an errata to two command cards that have warped gameplay around themselves since their introduction in Jabba's Realm, which are On the Lamb and Assassinate. On the Lamb has had its text errated so that the player using it must play the card before the dice are rolled, instead of getting to wait and see what the dice results would be before choosing to play the card. Meaning that they no longer get the luxury of waiting to see if they rolled a dodge or if the opponent whiffed on their attack dice to play the card. Assassinate has had its text changed to add a restriction that if it is used during an attack, it can be the only command card playing during that attack. 
This is meant to help stop some of the devastating command card chains that hunter lists are able to pull off by combining assassinate with multiple other command cards in a single attack to deal massive amounts of damage to a single target in a very short window of time. The ICP rules PDF contains a handy chart of which command cards can and cannot be played together with assassinate, but mostly it's any cards that say when you declare an attack, while you are attacking, and cards that would be played during the attack window like calm disruption or celebration. Finally, the most colorful change to come out of the ICP is to classic corset hero Diala Pasil, giving her improved health and better surge abilities and bringing more of her abilities from the campaign into the skirmish game with battle meditation granting her focus on all her attacks and force throw allowing her to suffer strain to push other figures around just like in the campaign. She also loses shattering blow to make up for these um, adds. So that's it. Those are all the changes that have been made to the skirmish game during season one. I really admire what these members of the community have stepped up to do for the game, and I wholeheartedly support their efforts in lieu of anything coming out of FFG at the moment. I think it's going to be great to see figures that were never quite good enough to see competitive play hitting the table in serious lists, and I think this is going to also be great for new players who want to get more into the competitive or semi-competitive skirmish scene, but are restricted in what figures they have access to, and can't afford to buy only the newest figures that came out after Java's, the, uh, the Java's Realm power level reset. This update makes figures from the core set and older expansions like Twin Shadows and Hoth not embarrassing to put on the table anymore, and it just generally helps to compress the huge gap in power level between a lot of the figures in the game. I also feel like the changes they've made to the command cards really pinpoint some of the more common or most common negative play experiences in competitive skirmish, and Spectre Cell excluded do so without rendering their respective archetypes any less powerful than they were before. The IACP hasn't been without its stumbles coming out of the gate though. There were some wording issues and some of the initial points cost changes were a bit too conservative to be meaningful, but the ICP community listened to the feedback from the community and made the changes that were needed. I feel like now that they're through that first couple of weeks um, of growing pains, they've made it out of that volatile beta test period and are now in a much more stable place where they're making changes in measured intervals going forward. What's important now is that the larger Imperial Assault community becomes more aware of this fixed community supported version of Skirmish and adopts it in their own local stores and playgroups. As it stands, the only hope for Imperial Assault Skirmish lies in the community, not in FFG. Until further notice, FFG has pretty much given up on this game except for doing the bare minimum of releasing promos and announcing new map rotations. But Imperial Assault players must unite if we are going to save this game. All of this work that is being done by the community to save this game isn't going to matter if only a small subset of the skirmish community is aware of it. That's why I'm telling all of you about this and why I want all of you guys and girls to look at the changes the ICP has made and bring them to your local communities. My hope is that by adopting this new rule set and bringing it to the wider play community and also to organize play, FFG will see how dedicated and committed its fan base is to this game and will rethink their position on its support of Imperial Assault. The IACP rule set is also great for bringing in new players to the game because it puts them on a more even footing with the rest of the more established players by bringing in old figures into the competitive fold and making them more competitive against the newer, more powerful power creeped figures from Jabba's Realm and onward. I've put a link in the description to the IACP website as well as to their current PDF of the current changes um, that are implemented for Season 1. So make sure you check that out. They have a great website that they've put together to present their, um, their changes uh, that's updated regularly and they also um, accept feedback from the community. Uh, write in the comments, tell me what you think about the IACP. What do you think about the rules and the changes they've made? Um, do you think it's too far? Do you think it's not going far enough to change the game? Tell me what you think in the comments. Also, if you're an Imperial Assault Skirmish player and you are not already plugged into the Zion's Finest Slack channel, you need to get on that Slack channel. That is where all the current conversation about Imperial Assault, both Skirmish uh, and other, other parts of the game are going on. I'll put a link in the description and a description of how to get connected to the Slack channel in the video description. And finally, if you are a Patreon of the channel, first of all, thank you so much. And I just want to say that um, I did send out Patreon rewards a couple of weeks ago. So uh, you guys should have gotten those um, in the past week or so. 
If you have not gotten a Patreon reward from me, please let me know. Uh, send an email to iacommand01 at gmail.com. I need your, um, I probably just don't have your address, uh, so please send me an email. Also, if you are a YouTube winner giveaway, uh, which I will put up on the screen right now, um, please send the email with your shipping address to the email I provided uh, so I can get you your, your uh, reward, your prize for commenting and engaging with the channel. Alright guys, that is it for this video. I have another uh, Worlds video coming up pretty soon with a special guest commentator uh, again. Uh, thanks for waiting for so long. It took a while to edit that one and also just to coordinate our schedules. So um, again, thank you very much for watching everybody and peace out.